Cool. Good uh good group tonight. So Peyton Castillo, what's up? Not much so far. All I've really had this week was um team practice and a hitting lesson. All right. So I had team practice and I had a hitting lesson. So when you and I talked on your one-on-one -on -one this week, you you had made a pretty good breakthrough, right? You had made a pretty good breakthrough, right? You had started another tournament uh, with a strikeout and you were like, uh-uh, that's the last K on the day. No way. I got to make a change and not be the same, right? Talk to me, talk to the group about that at bat, right? You just struck out, you walk back into the dugout. What was going on, right? You, you, cause you were, you were struggling the last couple tournaments, right? Uh, you, who, who's that? Is that, is that Poppy Tulo? No, it's my sister. Hold on. Oh, I got you. The star of my video. All right. So you good? Yeah. She was asking me to change in here. Oh, um, pro probably not. <laughs> yeah, probably not. So, so talk about, talk about that at bat, talk about what you went through afterwards and talk about how you felt the rest of the weekend after you were able to kind of work through it. So I've been on like a really long slump lately and I started off my last tournament with a strikeout. And I've just been, like, so sick and tired of getting, like, in these strikeouts or just, like, getting out all the time. So I got mad at myself, and I was like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of not swinging at the ball. And then my next at bat, I hit a, a, a triple that cleared all the bases. Peyton Clark, you're her teammate, <laughs> right? You're on her team. Talk about your excitement when you, when you saw her hit that triple. Because you and her – Right. The PC connection, you spend a lot of time together, uh, you hang out. Right. So so talk about how you felt when you saw her hit that triple. Um, I honestly felt great. I know it helped the team a lot, but just I was just really excited for her more than the team because uh, she was always really good with her. Uh, like. She would get down, but like instantly she would bounce right back and go make right. a play in the field. Like she was very good at recovering those moments. Like you, you, you wouldn't be able to tell that she was in a slump. So seeing her hit that ball was absolutely incredible. I love it. Right. So, so Peyton Castillo, talk to me again. Like, how did you feel? You're, you're coming into third, you stand up, right? You had just told yourself I had enough. I got to be tough. I got to go in there and play and slay. Right. And hit another ball today. So how did you feel, you know, coming into third base, standing up? I felt amazing. The first person that I saw when I got up was um, one of my teammates, dad, Miley's dad. Yeah. Um, Coach Lynn. And he was like, "At a girl, like clapping his hands and everything. It was, it was awesome to see. And I just like set the tone for the rest of the weekend. I love it. Right. And you continued set the set, write that down. <laughs> Right. Write that down. Set the tone for the rest of the weekend, because isn't that what it is? Right. Isn't that what it does? And can we not set a tone? Does it have to be the first at bat? No, you proved you can still struggle at some point in time throughout the day, but then come back. Right. And and decide that at this moment right now, whether it's the first at bat, the second at bat, the fifth at bat, at any point in time, you can clear your head and make a decision for greatness. Now, does that mean that you're going to step up the next at bat and hit a base clearing triple? I can't guarantee that, but it means that it'll give you the tools to be able to do that, right? You'll be more confident. You'll be more cool. You'll be more collective. Uh, you'll, you'll have a better opportunity with a clear mindset and one that's focused on what you need to do than, you know, not necessarily one that's all over the place. Oh, what's up? Hey. How you doing? I'm doing good. Good, good. What's what's um, picking on you in the corner of your eye? What what you looking at over there? My friend. Okay. Who is it? Sarah. You don't know her. You wanna you wanna bring her on camera with you? Instead of looking at her awkwardly, she can come sit next to you. <laughs> she doesn't want to. Okay, very good. All right. So so talk to me about your week, right? What's going on with you? Because yeah. you guys got a big tournament coming up as well, right? Yeah. 
So talk so to me. How yesterday, was your week? Yesterday I hit and did third downs because I've been wanting to work my third downs a lot more because they haven't been where I want them to be. Yeah. Um, and then I had a scrimmage today with the high school team. And I hit really good. Like, well, my first at bat was really good. I hit a line drive to right field. And then my second at bat, I got jammed on an inside pitch, but it's okay. And I've been working out like every day, except yesterday, but every day. And yeah, my work's been good. So you mentioned high school team. So newsflash, uh, Coach Jerry knows this, right? But I just got hired as a high school co uh, coach today. So I am now the head coach at Tampa Catholic High School in Tampa. Yeah. So I might see y'all out on the field and uh, be playing against y'all. I'm going to call Coach Nick and have him come over here to the West Coast and see see what Caitlin's team's got going on. That's good. Kate, how you doing? I'm good. My practice, well, like my tryout tonight got canceled because it was raining. Okay. Um, and then yesterday I hit and worked on my throws. All right. So how is the throw coming along? You still seeing steady progress or what? Yeah, it just, it keeps getting better every time I work on it. Isn't that how it works? Intentional effort makes things better. Oh, I'm going to switch back to you real quick, right? So you say throwdowns are not where I want them to be. What don't you like about your throwdown right now? Um, my transitions are kind of slow. Okay. Is this something you came up with or is somebody telling you that? Um, I feel like I feel it myself and some my dad. Okay, very good. What's your current pop time? Uh, I have no idea. Right, so we need to start there, right? Right, we can't work on what we don't know the end goal is, right? So we need to find out where we're at and where we can gain milliseconds, right? Tenths of a second in order to be able to drop that down. Because for you, right, transition, certainly important, right? The throw, velocity, upper body, lower body, right? You got to put it all together. That's what our sport does, right? But it's, it is all about transition and velocity as well as accuracy to be able to make that down, right? From the moment it hits the glove to the moment it hits the glove, that's what you're working on. So go get that baseline and, you know, dad can do it, right? Do it with a stopwatch, do it with a cell phone. Sometimes can be a little delayed, right? Um, but you get the general idea, right? Have you had your pop time taken in the past? Yeah, I have. It was like uh, two months ago. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. All right, how about the bottom of your head? Do you remember it from Wait, there? It's, it's 1.9. 1.9, that sounds like a good pop time, not bad. PC Clark, yeah. what's going on? Hi. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Oh, good. Yesterday we had team practice. Not much going on this week. We leave tomorrow for Atlanta, so super excited about that. And some of our teammates were all staying in like a really big Airbnb. So that's going to be really fun. Okay. But yeah, nothing much this week. Ooh, oh, 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 yesterday, yesterday, I had a hitting lesson before practice and my, I had a new PR of 68 off the tee. 68 off the tee. Your mom sent me the video of that, right? So that's pretty cool, right? So, so. That's intentional work, right? That's intentional effort. You have really, you've kind of turned it up the last couple of weeks, right? You've been on a, a pretty good upward slide, uh, moving in the right direction. Your averages are up. Your mindset is up. Even when things are not going your way, you're still figuring out a way to stay up. So, you know, that's why I sent you that little email today. Not like, you know, that you're not working hard, but sometimes when things continue to go well for us, we get in that kind of fly like an eagle, right? And we're we're kind of soaring and having a good time. And, you know, I want you to just, the reason that things are going well is because you're working your butt off, right? Yeah. You're you're in the gym, you're in the lab, you're you're doing the work that I'm sending you, right? You're you're working out, you're you're applying it on the field, right? We got to work on that open stance a little bit. I send dad a a good picture of you. I'm sure he showed it to you. Right. Um, but dude, you're still hitting the fence with that. Right. So the power there, as you can see, 68, you know, at 13 on the, on the exit, right. The, the ability to be able to stand open with a half check swing and still hit the ball 180 feet. Dude, that's all good, positive stuff. As you continue to refine 
your skills and continue to refine your work, right? So what else is going on? Anything, anything else we need to talk about? Not currently. I don't think so. I love it. I love I think it. It pops in my mind. I'll talk to you. Look, just shout it out. Navea, how you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Looks like you're either coming to or coming back for what well, you got to be coming back from practice, right? Yeah, I'm coming back from practice. So how was practice tonight? It was good. It was more, we had, um, we had two official tryouts and then two girls who were guest playing with us for this weekend. So they were just coming out for a practice, but we had an overall really good practice. Okay. Very good. Very good. So what were you working on specifically tonight? I mean, I know what the team was working on, right? But remember, we're goal oriented. When we show up, you know, we're going to follow what the coach wants us to do. But within that, right, if we're throwing, then we know that when we come to practice, if coach has got us throwing, yeah, we're working on that. But we're working on that target. We're working on eye contact. We're working on follow through. We have these mini goals within practice for ourselves, right? So right. Um, what were you, uh, if anything, and if the answer was, look, I'm just going through practice, learning a new team, learning a new way, that's okay too, right? So what what specifically were you working on tonight? So we did a lot of first baseman drills and for while we were doing them, I really wanted to focus on backhand picks. I struggle a little bit on them. So those were definitely something I was trying to be more focused on and more like, okay, like controlling my body, making sure I'm getting low and behind the ball. Yeah. Um, and then for hitting, mainly just keeping, I've noticed this past tournament, I, my entire body flew forward. Like my shoulders opened up a lot. So just keeping my shoulders and my hips kind of stacked on top of each other. Whilst yeah. Playing. Yo, so, so I, I think if, if your softball path, you know, continues as I'm sure it will, right. As you reach, you know, college and, and then start moving on to the next level. Like I, you talk so technical, like I can see you coaching. Right. Like you've got a lot yeah. of good, like you just explain things well. I mean, I almost think you're like 35 the way you talk sometimes. Right. You, you're just very good at explaining things. So, you know, good for you. It looks like you, you've got a smile on your face. It looks like you're feeling good. Like the, the team is working out. Things are kind of moving in a positive yeah. direction for you. So how, how are you feeling overall? Right. Your, your whole aura looks a whole lot better than it did just a few months ago. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, this past tournament, I was top three highest uh, batting averages with a four four four. Yeah. Um. So that was pretty sick. Um. <laughs> but mentally, I'm doing very well. Um. I noticed a lot of growth when I first joined. I was very like I've always got in my head whenever I would make an error, strike out, do little things. And this past tournament, I realized that I didn't get like that. And even when I did kind of get on myself, I snapped out of it extremely quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Because isn't that what we're working on? Right. We know that bad thoughts are going to happen. We know errors are going to happen. We know that we're going to drop what they call a routine ball. We're going to have a hot stick come to us and make a bobble. You know, we're going to make these mistakes. We're going to be in a three, two count and watch strike three looking. And people are going to look at us like we're crazy. Coach is going to throw his hands up and turn around. We're going to then be told that we have to come to the dugout with a positive attitude and everything is going to be okay. Right. And, you know, so we know that things are going to happen, but what we're doing here is giving you the tools, the fortitude, the education, the confidence to be able to say, okay, man, I got jacked up there, but by the time I get to the dugout, it's gone, right? Boom, it doesn't matter, right? It's in the past, I gotta move on, right? So that's what we have to work on and continue to work on. And it sounds like you're doing a pretty good job with that, right? Anything that you're still struggling with, what's what what what's at the forefront? Like, man, I'm still hitting this, but it's it's still a little hit or miss for me. Anything like that? Inside pitches. Okay. Like hitting an inside pitch. Sure. All right. That's one thing I work on a lot, but it's just, it's my swings are fine. I'm early. It's mainly, I'm not opening up my hips. So I'm always jamming myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, look, you know, Rome, that's where Rome wasn't built in a day. Everything doesn't happen overnight, right? That's continuous repetition, seeing them live, seeing them, you know, like you said, continually 
working on it. So cool. Riley Swiley. What's up, girl? Um, nothing much. Just today I've been going out to the high school practices. I got invited to those. He asked Okay. me to play fall ball. And then today I got cleared from PT. I'm fully cleared. <laughs> Right, so and let's go, I... right? That's what I'm talking about. Back on the field, the real deal. I love it. What else? I am able to throw my drop with no uncomfortableness. That was my next So... question. That was my next question. Can you make that drop pop? Or does that arm make you want to stop? I, I, so it's good, right? <laughs> my drop has been really good Why does since Olivia it's coming always back. turn her head when I do little rhymes? Why does she always just be like, whatever? <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, so cool. So you're pain-free. The drop feels good. The arm feels good. We've had a couple weeks of rest, a couple weeks of physical therapy, a couple weeks to kind of relax the mind. Did you have any times where you were just like, ah, oh, I need to pay. I need to play. I need to pitch. Like this is getting on my nerves having to be patient. Yes. Every time I was at practice, I would always want to like do things, but I couldn't do them. I'd have to like stop myself. And then almost every day I would have a thought that runs through my mind of like, I can't do that. Stop. Like, Yeah. yeah. Right. Because look, rest is just as important as play. Right. And And hopefully it makes you appreciate the game, right? Because, you know, there's a lot of girls that wake up every day and can't play the game, don't have the ability to play the game, want to play the game. You know, maybe their time in the game is over, right? So we have to wake up every day loving the game, appreciating the game, because it's going to take stuff from you, right? It's going to take your time. It's going to take birthday parties. It's going to take, you know, vacations. It's going to take all these things, right? But it's also going to give you memories it's going to give you you know just personal fitness it's going to give you a mindset it's going to help you literally do whatever you want right like my daughter jerry i'm sure you do it right my daughter's 23 years old and we still have conversation she's like man this is hard i'm like yeah well you just got to treat it like it's a three two count toughen up lock in laser out and figure it out right so you know, the, the game is, is, is a lot of fun. So I'm glad that you are cleared to play. So when, so you went out tonight or you went out, when did you actually go out? Have you thrown, have you been back at it? Like, have you had that chance yet? I've been at it. It's just I can throw everything but drop. But I um yesterday I threw a drop and I felt perfectly fine. So But did you hit it? hmm? Did it look good? Okay. Really good. I think it's the best it's looked. You better stop. I, I'm gonna You better stop, Riley. Riley, I'm I you know what? I can't. I got to I got to I got to stop. I can't do it, Riley. I got to I look, you just got to see a picture of me at this point. I'm making all kinds of faces right now. You better stop. So, what's wrong, Peyton? You all right? Peyton just like Can't for that drop. <laughs> hey, listening. I love it. So, so I mean, the reason I'm I'm joking around is because, I mean, it was just a month ago. What was your worst pitch? Drop. Drop, right? Now, right, you you threw it a whole bunch of times in order to make it your best pitch. You you cut a little injury uh, throwing it so much, right? So we got to regulate that pitch a little bit and 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 really just, you know, it's almost like you've not run ever in your life and then you go run a marathon. You're going to have a whole bunch of shin splints, right? You know, I, you said that was your worst pitch. I was like, prove me wrong. And you did. And now here we are. Right. So now find the middle, right. Use it, you know, continue to master it. Um, but that's all right here. Right. That's, you know, if, if you say something is your worst, right. Like what is your worst X, Y, and Z? Okay. Am I going to accept that? Am I just going to say, that's cool. That's the worst thing that I got going on. Or am I going to look at that, analyze it, break it down, and attack it, right? Right, Addy, I'm going to come to you for a second, right? Because you just had a big old sandwich, so I know you're ready to talk, right? So, Addy, you had a big, big breakthrough this week, right? Like, you and I, we had a tough session, right? Like, like we had a really tough session. Uh, guys, just letting you know, uh, Coach Pat just joined the conversation, Pat Affronti. Uh, NSA St. Leo 
uh, part of Lead Your Journey, one of the coaches on here. All the people in the group know him, all the guests. You are now introduced to him. So, Addy, you and I had a big meeting this week, right? Like, it went almost two hours like we were, we were in it. Right. And, and you had to kind of realize some things and I had to realize some things and dad was sitting there being a whole big support group for you. Right. Like, I don't want to relive that, but the change that you have shown this week has really been, I mean, it's been your best week ever. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Like, you know, you can unmute and, and chat with me. Right. So yeah, no. So yes. it, I mean, it's really, in my opinion, it's been your best week ever. Like, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this up for a second, right? And I'm gonna go to my my my. Let, let, let me pull this up and share this real quick, just for a split second. So, right, if you look, let's see, where is it at? Boom. Where are you at? Boom, boom, boom. Maybe you're in. Oh, that's it, Lee. Right. So, like, look at all these. Y'all can see this, right? Like, look at all these emails from Addy. Right. Like this is more emails in one day than Addie's ever sent in her life. Y'all see that? Right. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 emails uh, sent out by Addie today. Right. And so, you know, I mean, I say that because the breakthrough that we had last week was, you know, I related to a seesaw. You were kind of in the middle of a seesaw and everything was moving around you, but you were kind of standing still, right? Like you, you, you weren't making moves to do something because you were afraid of two things. Someone might like me, someone might not, right? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Right. So, you know, we really had to have a hard talk about that because you were afraid to make a move because if someone liked you, and started to follow you, that meant that, man, this is real. Now I got to turn it on, right? Everything that everybody's been talking about, I now have to do, right? And and then the harder part was, what if I put all of this effort out there and they don't like me, right? Like we shed some tears over that, right? Like dad was rubbing your back and, and like we were in the moment and you had a choice to make of, ah, whatever, this is too hard or kind of doing what you did this week. And I don't know, what did you do this week? If you don't, if you care to share. Um, I had so far, I had a tournament this past weekend. Um, I just focus more so on having fun really on, cause it was a tier one where the coaches were like on the field and they would like, watch and sometimes like stop and like coach you through stuff yep. so I just like focused on like having fun out of all of it and I did decently like better than like pitching wise I did a lot better um but hitting still needs improvements um then Monday I went to the I think it was Seminole State evaluation camp mm -hmm. and I did I did well I would say it was okay I got you but yeah and then today I had high school practice so on the field and then in the weight room and then I came home and did emails and then yeah. Yeah. But I mean, listen, that's the most you've done in a week on your own, right? With, with little pushing or prodding and, and, you know, you, you found the game, then you kind of fell into a little bit of a dip and now you're finding your way back again and kind of finding that confidence to understand process outcome, right? Not necessarily result, but I have to put in the work continually, right? In order for somebody to acknowledge that I'm putting in the work, I actually have to do what? Work. Ah, <laughs> work, 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 work all day long, right? So that's what you have to do. You have to, you have to want this journey more than anybody else, right? Like you, you all, every single one of you, and, and LB, I'm gonna get to you next, right? Every single one of you have 
high powered, engaged parents. You know, Castillo, would you agree you have high powered, engaged parents, right? In the sport, in your life, <laughs> Peyton Clark, like you're like, yeah, no more hand on face. Like, yep, dad right here. Like you, you, you better tell him I'm high powered and engaged. Right. So I get it. Right. Like Caitlin, you're no different. Right. Captain, Captain Kurt, like is, is there ready to pure, pure, pure on whenever he needs to. Right. Nevaeh, your dad's just as intense. I mean, we're all intense. I'm intense. That's why we're here. Jerry's intense. Like, that's why we're all here doing this, right? So that's what you have to bring to the game is that intensity. You have to bring that to your recruiting. You have to bring that to your attitude. You have to bring that to your walk up to the plate. You have to bring that to your walk back to the plate, right? Like, it's not an attitude like, get off me, I'm better than you attitude, but it's a confident walk. It's a confident talk. It's a confident presence. It's a confident being, knowing that when you're out there, I mean, that's it. Everybody else is out there with you. You're all fighting the same struggle. You're all trying to be great. You're all trying to please the people outside the fence, in the dugout, in this little L-shaped box, and they keep telling you to go and go, and you're like, bro, I'm going. Like, chill, right? So cool. I'm about to bring in right now a pretty cool person who I've known since she was 10 years old, uh, just graduated from James Madison University. She's a uh, division one pitcher, uh, as well as an international player, uh, well known by a lot of you in the game. Uh, where did she go there? Are you still there? Did she, did she, yep, there she is. So, uh, Miss Alyssa Humphrey, how you doing dear? Can you I'm hear good. me? Good. Good. Yeah. There you are. Cool. Good. So yeah, guys, Alyssa Humphrey, how you doing? I'm good. I'm great. Just got back from a camp. Okay. Where were you at? What camp were you uh, running? My, I was at my high school. We have a four day camp this week. Got you. Got you. So you, you know, you're here with a group of about, I think there's 18, 20 people on here just to kind of catch you up. We're, we're actually just getting ready to get started at the beginning of these group sessions. The kids that are part of the program, um, I kind of talk to them for a few minutes individually just to catch up what they have going on for the week, where they've been, what's going well, what they're struggling with. Uh, I think we got one more LB left. Um, and then we're kind of, kind of get into it. We're going to talk about a couple different programs, a couple different things. Uh, but you were recently in Puerto Rico, were you not? Weren't you playing internationally? Yeah, I fly out on the weekends. Oh, so you're still playing over there. So you're at home during the yeah. week and then tough life going to Puerto Rico on the weekends <laughs> to play ball. Like how cool <laughs> is that though? How did you get that opportunity? Um, just networking, uh, just there was some really good people in the area, Orlando Boyer out of Tampa. Yeah. Um, his kid plays for Tampa. His kid plays for the Tampa Mustang, Mustangs. Yeah, he Savvy's set me dead. up with the league. Yeah. Yeah. Savvy said. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. All right. Very good. Let me go LB real quick. LB, where are you at? I'm right here. My no, so, camera's not working. No, that's so. okay. That's okay. I know you're 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 traveling. You're in a hotel. You're in Texas. So LB, you you have literally played uh, a professional travel ball schedule this summer, right? Talk talk to me about where you've been, where you just landed, and what you have going on over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so we just got back from Georgia on Sunday. We played in that legacy tournament. We came second, and then I had one day off Monday, left at 3 a.m. in the morning, and flew to Texas. So Ooh. now I'm in Texas, and then I have practice tomorrow, and then I play on Thursday. Right, so let's tell the real story. So you you won a state championship, right? Uh, and and then you had about a week off, started practicing, showed up, played Show Me the Money, Went from show me the money, I think, to uh, Kansas. Kansas. Went from Kansas to Colorado, Colorado to Atlanta. And now 24 hours later, turn around, go to Texas. And then after that, it's California. Woo. Yes. <laughs> Girl. I mean, so how have you handled this? Because that summer is more intense than anybody on the board here right now. How have you handled uh, that level of play. Like I've played that intense, like coach that intense summer. Alyssa, I know you've played intense summers like that for sure. Uh, Jerry, you've coached intense summers like that. Like, so LB for you, how, how has that been? I mean, you're playing, winning and executing at the highest level possible. Tell us about that experience for you. It's honestly like 
even though it sounds like a lot, it's really fun because of my teammates who are always there. And then like my mom who's supporting me and like pushing me through it. I love it. And so, you, and, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you, you go. No, I was just going to say like, you've had a lot of success. Like um, you went to a camp out in Colorado that the, uh, the organization, the unity organization that you play for, uh, I believe put together or was out there. Talk about that camp and kind of the audience that you had watching what you were doing. Oh, so we had a unity organizational workout where the, my class 2028 and 2027 were on one field and we just had like groups and we did hitting and pitching and we had a bunch of college coaches, over 50 college coaches out there just watching. Yeah. How'd you feel in that moment? That's pretty intense for, you know, a 14, 15 year old kid, kind of not the first time you've seen college coaches, but the first time you've probably had 50 of them uh, at your backstop. How did that feel? It was exciting. Yeah. Like, like that's the moment, right? So, so now what have you done after these tournaments in order to connect with these schools that are tracking you? Oh, so after the tournaments, I say thank you to all the coaches who came out. I tell them stuff that they may have missed, like not being at every game. And then I give them a schedule for the next tournament I'm going to, to keep them updated. I love it. I love it, man. So look, everybody's had some good progress this week. A couple, couple things set back, couple things to work on, but everybody is, uh, you know, really setting the tone for having a great summer. Does everybody feel like they've made progress this summer? Right. Everybody is working hard. Everybody is playing hard, whether you're just starting on a new team and getting to know the people around you, whether you've been on the team that you're on for a while and growing as a group and a player, like the things that we're seeing, the things that we're, we're able to show are, have really been a lot of fun. Jerry, how's your team? I was at practice last night, a lot of energy, a lot of fun going on. I mean, you've got your, your daughter, a division one pitcher that's helping you out now. Uh, throw into the kids. They would, they, you know, they're getting big, right? Lots of energy on that crew. They look a lot much better than they did when I saw them in the beginning of the spring. How's your team progressing? And what are you looking forward to on this last tournament of the year? Uh, you know, we're just, you know, hoping to go to Tennessee, have a good showing. Um, you know, there's only uh, nine teams at it. Uh, but I mean, we got teams from Utah, Texas, Georgia, Arkansas. I think there's a team from Carolina and Jersey. Love it. Um, you know, so we just want to go out there and, you know, just execute and play the way we know we can play. Um, you know, it's, we've not had a lot of great finishes this season. Um, we have been injury riddled. Um, and I tell the girls all the time, you know, nobody really beats us. We usually end up beating ourselves. We usually had that one inning where, we let one mistake, one mistake snowball into three or four, and that's yeah. usually the inning that, you know, bites us in the butt and causes us to lose the game. Um, so it's we really haven't faced a team that has beat us. You know, it's it's us just beating ourselves, and I just hope we don't run into that team this week, uh, next week in Tennessee. So, um, <laughs> but you know, we, we had a lot of good energy last night. Um, practices have been fairly decent. Um, so. With Jade and Jayla, you know, out at practice, Jayla's going with us to uh, to Tennessee. So hopefully they'll have someone that they can lean on, um, you know, uh, you know, that's been there and done that. Got it. All right, listen, I'm going to bring you back in. Right. So, uh, I mean, you you've graduated. Right. You're playing now uh, international ball. Kind of tell the group here. Who, who may not know you. I know you know some of the kids in here. You work with them yourselves, right? But the people that may not know you uh, as a person or a player in here, kind of, you know, let's take it back to the Stone Crab days all the way uh, to today. You know what I'm saying? Like, kind of tell them a little bit about your journey. Uh, Yeah, so um, I'm Melissa. I'm from just south of Gainesville here in Florida. Um, I started travel ball with, like, a local team in Jacksonville like a small team when I used to play hoops when he was the stone crabs and um, eventually worked my way through the Inferno organization. Um, I spent my last year with Tampa Mustangs TJ. That was my biggest uh, team, I guess. Yeah. Um, I went, I was committed to Jacksonville university, JU and in, in um, up in Florida. And 
I only lasted there a semester before I entered the portal. It just wasn't a good fit for me. Yeah. I'd been committed there for three or four years. And then once I got there, I just wasn't, just wasn't for me. No hard feelings or anything. I went in the portal, transferred to James Madison. Uh, my freshman year, we went to the World Series. You guys probably watched it. <laughs> um, I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people did. Uh, we went to the World Series. Um, my sophomore year, I played with Team USA. Um, been through a lot. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff has happened in my career. I uh, lost a teammate. Uh, but I finished out my career at JMU. And, yeah, now I'm playing internationally or I guess it's kind of international, not really, since they're still part of the States, but playing out in Puerto Rico the last few weekends. And, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. Yeah, but we're not, we're not going to let you just cruise by like that, right? Like, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, you you went through a, a lot of great stuff, and you did certainly have some adversity, right? Like, you know, without mm-hmm. getting too deep in it, because, you know, both universities, great place, you're a great place, all mm-hmm. the coaches, great coaches, we all have working relationships now, you know, I mean, this is just part of the journey, right, the process, mm-hmm. what you think, you know, you don't know what you what you do know, you you don't know, right. And and you don't know it until you get the experience and gain uh, that time. So, you know, girls pay attention to some of the things that she said there, right. So, um, committed, you know, this was when kids were still committing at a young age, right before the rule change, right? So 14, 15 years old, you could commit, they changed the rules. You guys can't do that now, uh, until you're, you know, 16 years old, that's September 1st of your junior year. Um, but had a great recruiting experience, had a great time throughout high school. One of the top high school players got to the school where she was at, um, for whatever reason, good, bad, or indifferent, Uh, decided to change her mind. So we talk about this in the group, right? Like, you know, you have goals and you have focus, but you're allowed as a person to change your mind, right? A lot of times we don't have the courage to change our mind because we feel like we've made this commitment or our parents are going to be disappointed or our coaches are going to be disappointed, right? So we work on open channels with you guys being able to talk to your parents about how you truly feel about what's going on So that when these tough moments like Alyssa went through come up, right? You have a great relationship with your dad and your mom. You've got a very close knit family. Like I'm, I don't know the whole story, but I'm sure when these things came up, you had conversations. I I remember your dad during that time frame. So you know all kinds of support. So talk about that transfer period. How did you find JMU? How did you know that that was going to be the spot for you? Because I mean, you set records at JMU. You had a career there, right? Like, I, I short of winning the College World Series, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure you could have had a better career, at least in inside that eight foot circle, right? So, talk about how you found JMU and and kind of those three years specifically, and how good or you know how great that was for you. Yeah, um, I think the best piece of advice, like before I go into it, is. Um... You never know how important someone's going to be, like a coach, uh, someone on staff, uh, just random travel ball coaches, like, so create a network. Um, So basically, I uh, committed to JU uh, my sophomore year, like early sophomore year of high school, and the pitching coach at the time eventually left and went to James Madison. So three, four years later down the road, once I went in the portal, she reached out again. So I basically had had a relationship with her. Um, I built a relationship with her throughout high school and then she obviously ended up leaving, but I, you know, rekindled that relationship. And that's how I basically ended up at JMU. Um, the head coach and our associate head coach had actually never seen me play before. Um, and they really just took a chance, but because of the people I knew and because I played on such a high level that it uh, ended up just helping me out. So portal, um, just because it's so uh, popular these days, you got to, not saying prepared to enter the portal, but you just got to understand that you don't know how important is someone's going to be. Um, I mean, JU, JMU is a really big difference, but the coach that I knew at JU eventually made it to that high of a level at JMU. So I'm glad that I had that relationship with her. So basically um, I heard one of the girls talking about how she thinks coaches after camps and tries to create conversations. Um, it's super cliche, but like, that's just super important. You don't know where that coach is going to be whenever your recruiting process does eventually begin and you start actually having offers and talking to coaches. I love that. Right. Because didn't we just talk about this last week, 
right? A lot of you went to camps last week or week before last, and we had conversations about walking up, introducing yourself, speaking to coaches, making sure that they know your name, that you know their name, right? That that you bring your profile sheet, that you have questions, you know, especially if it's a two-day camp. If you've spent a day with a coach, right, a, you know, or a few coaches, and you go home that night and you don't come back with questions the next day, are you really interested? Are you really paying attention? Or are you just there because mom and dad told you this is the camp that you have to go to, right? So, I mean, what Coach Alyssa is saying there, right, is completely factual, right? The people that you're meeting today, the relationships that you're making today. I mean, Coach Jerry, Alyssa here right now, right? He's spending tons of time with here in here with us, right? I mean, he, he send kids who, who, a couple of you in here, you don't even have to raise your hand. You want to go play in the garnet and gold, right? Well, it's Jerry sent about seven or eight kids there, knows those people very well, right? So just the conversations and communication in him in here, learning your character, knowing who you are, knowing, watching how you play on the field. She's completely right. Like it's, it's a lot of times it's, it's what you do and how you play, but then it's also who, you know, you're talking about a power five program that took a chance on a kid without having her see her play live. And, and thank God they did because freshman year, you find yourself in Oklahoma standing in the circle. Talk about that, right? Like, booyah, like, welcome to JMU. This is what we're going to do. How How is that? Like, that is, that is the moment, is it not? Or or maybe maybe just as a spectator, I think it is. How was that moment for you? Yeah, it was super big. I'd never played in front of 15, 16,000 people. So, of course, it's huge. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a lot of experience out in Oklahoma. Like I didn't play that much, but sure. just be like just being there was just a really great experience. Um atmosphere is definitely different, uh a lot more intense. But I honestly think that postseason run that we had kind of prepared me for it. Um we went to Tennessee for regionals. I mean, it's a pretty hostile environment, and then we just got worse. We went to Mizzou for supers and had to go to game three. But yeah, it was crazy. Um, but I really, uh, like once you're in this, once you're in the moment, you just can't make it bigger than what it is. Yeah. So like, I know a lot of national tournaments are probably coming up for you guys. You just can't make it bigger. Like just because there's a bunch of coaches sitting behind home plate, like you can't, you don't, you just gotta play your game. And that's basically what I did. Like I wasn't playing with a bunch of college coaches. I was just playing in front of 20,000 people and Jocelyn Olo just happened to be in the box. So you just gotta <laughs> play your game and just not make it bigger than what it is. Yeah. And man, like watching you grow up, right. It was, it was a lot of fun for me because like 10 to 14, we had some pretty good battles and, you know, we, we beat you, you beat me. And then, and then you hit 15 and I never beat you again. Right. Like, I mean, you just turned it on. You went to a whole new level. Uh, you really became in the travel ball circuit around here. I, I don't want to toot your own horn, but a lot of times just unbeatable. You know what I'm saying? Like you were, you were killing it. Uh, you ended up playing for Team USA for a little bit. How was that representing your country in the game you love? Yeah, it was it was a great experience. Um, I was honestly surprised I got the invite to the tryout. So after the World Series, um, it was the, the next fall, I got um, an invite to the tryout. They took 36 people to the tryout. And um, it was crazy. I mean, it was some of the best softball I've ever played. We just scrimmaged for three, four days. But yeah, no, having that experience, I had never left the country before so I got to play out in Peru a little bit in Colombia I was gone for about a month and a half uh, we won the World Cup we won the Pan Am Games I mean COVID kind of set us back a little bit it wasn't as great of an experience it could have been but like I was just super grateful and blessed to be there in the first place I think I me and um, Carly Spade who just second in home runs all time like we're the only mid-majors that were representing out there so I just thought that was super big and huge for mid-majors but just an honor to represent USA too Look, I continue to sing your accolades, right? And and this group is is about mindset and performance and getting better and trusting yourself and being able to have positive self-talk in these big moments and being able to stand, you know, in Oklahoma or in Tennessee or in, you know, these, you know, Columbia and these big environments. So, you know, you have played one, performed uh, and and done very well. But there had to have been moments where you where you asked yourself, could you do it? Right. Is this, you know, a really capable? Right. How did I get to this point? Like, did you have those negative moments? And if so, like how or what did you do to pull yourself through them? Uh, yeah, um, basically, uh, a 
lot of the accolade, accolades that Hoops is talking about really happened my freshman year. So I just started out really, really strong, which was great and all. But then when I started to fail my sophomore year, it really hit me harder. Um, I really had struggled with that adjustment. I'd just been so successful, like not trying to like brag or anything. Like I'd just been so successful for the three, four or five years prior. And my sophomore year came and there was a lot of film on me. I wasn't performing as well. I kind of got in my head. I was struggling with some like personal mental health issues. Uh, just stuff that happens, like just things that people go through. And yeah, I mean, it, it happens, but you've got to figure out how to get through it. Uh, you got to talk to professionals. You got to figure out player development coaches, um, sports psychologists. That's I did all of that. I think that really helped. Um, but yeah, I just really had struggled with the adjustment with failing. And like, it took me a while to realize it was, it was okay to fail. And like, it didn't mean that my hard work wasn't paying off. It's just that you can't be the best all the time. Like there's always going to be someone better. And it just took a, it took a long time for me to realize that. So once I realized that I was a little bit um, easier on myself, I, I'm definitely tough on myself. I really wanted to be the best and I try to do whatever it takes to be the best. But at times there's just going to be people who are better um, talent wise, maybe they worked harder or whatever it is, but you just got to figure out what's works for you. Um, I just learned to accept failure and just learn how to battle through failure um, rather than allowing it to spiral. Right. And, and you did that, right? Because you ended up, uh, you know, climbing some lists, you know, uh, uh, gaining some ground and uh, leaving JMU as, as one of their top pitchers all time. Right. And I, I know that's hard to talk about yourself that way, but uh, it's, I think it's an important story to talk about your finish, right? Even though you're not done playing ball, but you're finished from JMU and how you bounce back from that sophomore slump, if you want to call it that, right? Um, and and what you work through and how strong you were to be able to pull yourself through that, uh, to be able to walk away as as one of the top on the board, right? Because you deserve a lot of credit for that, right? Like your, your story, while well, yes, like you said, I, in your freshman year filled with accolades, like following your story list, like you have fought hard, you have worked hard, you've you've done a lot of it on your own, you know, with your family support and with your teammates support. Um, but, but those dark moments where no one can help us is where we have to dig through. And and you've done that and, and finished as one of the top in the program's history. So talk about that finality, that finish and kind of what you're doing outside of going to Puerto Rico. Now that travel ball or not travel ball, excuse me, college ball is, uh, it's over travel ball. Goodness. Uh, yeah. Um, so basically Puerto Rico takes up a lot of my time right now. Yeah. I'm gone basically Friday through Monday, I'm only in like in the States, in the States a couple days a week. But, um, so I'm really just having a good time with that. Um, training a little bit just to make sure I'm staying in shape. So for Puerto Rico, but doing a lot of camps, um, some clinic stuff, um, obviously lessons, trying to find a big girl job, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. But really just staying like um, in the softball world, just finding a new perspective with it, taking more of like a coaching side, um, instructor side rather than full-time player, just sure. backing off just a little bit, trying to find a new perspective with it. I love it, right? Because your story is strong and powerful and and to be able to pass it down to these, you know, girls, I mean, the oldest one in here, Addie's our senior citizen, right? Um, and, and she's just going into her junior year. Everybody else here is, is just getting ready for the most part. I think mine is Riley to go in or I'll end Peyton to go into the ninth grade. The rest of them are, you know, in eighth grade. So they're, so they're on the younger side, right? So, um, they're just starting their journey and just breaking away from that 14 U to now everybody's talking about scholarships and it's different now and you got to pay attention and, you know, so. Talk about what you would tell, I guess, them, right? What you would tell your younger self, what you would tell these girls about the start of their recruiting process, kind of, you know, maybe where you want to go and great if you end up there. And, and if you don't end up where you, you still end up where you're supposed to be, right? So kind of give them your take on those first couple years. I mean, I know you recruited early, but you've been around the process long enough to know kind of how it goes and and what advice you would give somebody just getting ready to start it out? I think the hardest thing for people to realize is um, being realistic. 
Um, I knew from pretty early on I wasn't going to go UF, FSU. Like, I, that just wasn't – that wasn't what I wanted. I wasn't – not like – I just wasn't good enough. Like, I was not – I was not going to go be an ace at UF or FSU or, like, Clemson. Like, I, like Power 5 just wasn't really – in my wheelhouse like that's just I just wasn't quite good enough for that like so I accepted that I wanted to go to a mid-major um pretty early on mid-major being just a non-power five school if sure. anyone's confused or anything but um so just being realistic um understand where you can go and where you can play um some people want to go to the big school and they're fine if they don't play but like that's not what I wanted like I wanted to go somewhere where I could leave my mark and I wasn't gonna be able to do that at Florida or FSU or any of those big time schools so once I ended up at JMU, like JMU was pretty good all the last 10 years. So finishing top 25 most years. So I, it was pretty much of a stretch for me too, to go in there, but I just wanted to go somewhere that I could leave my mark. Um, pitcher, like as a pitcher, I have a little bit different recruiting. I think people always want to get pitchers and catchers first. Pitchers, catchers, big time hitters. Like those, those are the people who go first. So if you're not, you don't get your call on, what is it, September 1st, like I wouldn't be worried about it. Like, don't freak out. You've got plenty of time. Understand that the pitchers and catchers and the, the kids who had a bunch of home runs every weekend, they're going to get the calls first. That's just being realistic with it. And then like going to camps and clinics, like staying off the realistic topic. Um, understand like how, how good you really are, or, like how good you really want to work for. Um, it's there's nothing wrong with going JUCO, D2, D3, NAIA. So go to those camps that you actually think you could go there and make a mark. Because I go to super big camps and they never end up going that far. And as much as it like it sucks to say, like they just it was just too much of a stretch from the beginning. So understanding the reality of it, um, somewhere that you can go and really find your role on the team and make that difference and start as much as you possibly can, play as much as you possibly can, leave with some records, leave with some accolades, whatever it is that you want to do. So being realistic with your goals and doing whatever it takes to achieve those goals and then just being realistic in your recruiting process with different schools, location. Like for me personally, financials was a big deal. Like I don't come from a super wealthy family. I had to go somewhere that could pay for my school. So originally I wanted to stay in state. That's why I ended up at JU in the portal I had to go to a school that could offer a lot of money like that was that's just a that's just being realistic some people they don't have that like that's not something on the board for them so just understand like what you want out of a school like I needed a I wanted a big time program that could that could give me a lot of money and scholarship and that's what JMU offered for me so that's the biggest thing I can give um advice on is just being realistic and like really just having a reality check like how good you really are what position do you play like can you go to this whatever schools you have like on your top five or whatnot, could you go there and actually play for that school and like make it, make a difference there. I love it. Girls, any questions for Alyssa before I let her go? Anybody? It's a perfect opportunity. All right. Well, very good. Listen, any last words before we close it out? Any, uh, anything else you want to add? Well, Peyton Clark's oh, got one. Hold on. So. Peyton Clark's got one. Go ahead, PC. Um, this is just like not really it is software related, like it was about JMU. Uh just like a off topic. Just wanting to know. Curious question. Uh what was your like relationship with Odyssey Alexander when you played there? <laughs> Odyssey and I are, Odyssey and I are cool. Um not that she's hard to play with, but Odyssey is a very um She's very sassy. <laughs> so, and yeah, she's very emotional. Like she's very sassy. She's got a little attitude. You definitely want her on your team. Like you don't want to play against her. Cause I mean, like for lack of a better word, she's badass. but um, no, me and Austin were cool. I love throwing bullpens with her. She's super funny. She, she's super fun and enjoyable to be around. I saw her Um, actually my last game I played in out in uh, Texas, she came out and I, I was just so excited to see her. Like we have a really good relationship. Love pitching with her. Love being on a team with her. She's probably one of the funniest people I know, for sure. Liz, aren't you super sassy and super competitive when you're in that <laughs> circle, though? Like, I've played against you. Like, you're super sassy. Come on. Like, you're sweet on this, I'm... right? You're sweet on here right now. But you you have burned holes in my soul with your looks before. Come on. <laughs> I don't know if I'm sassy. I, I think I'm more of the composed type. I, I keep yeah. it all together. Yeah. I mean, I'm competitive, but I'm not, I'm not super, I'm 
I'm super showy with it. I try to I try to stay composed, just have a good presence, nothing too crazy. Maybe maybe it's just when you were 14. <laughs> All good. Well, listen, man, I, I listen, I cannot thank you enough, right? Your story is and, and I want to talk to you more, right? I, I want you uh uh I, I'm sure the girls enjoyed your story. You know, they they look for individual mentors. I've got a couple of pictures in here. Um, I've got a couple of kids that, you know, I'm sure you probably already know Riley, you know. Um Riley, do you know Alyssa? I'm sure you do, right? Yeah, I figured as much. Uh, you guys are kind of from the same neck of the woods roundabout. Olivia, do you know Alyssa? You're you're kind of up that way too, no? Yeah, kind of. Cool. All right, well, Alyssa, I appreciate your time. I really do. I'll I'll give you a text when we hang up here and and connect with you. And uh, but yeah, man, what a compelling story. I that's why I wanted to connect with you. I know you you have played at the absolute highest level international ball. You've set records along the way, but your story you know, was not easy. You're a competitor, you're a fighter. You went through so much more that we haven't even talked about, um, that, that you, you have made it through on, on this end, but, but that's what this journey is, right? We, we have the good moments, we have the struggles, and then we bounce back and come for more of the good moments. And then we go to the next phase and we have to figure that out. So certainly thank you for your time. Girls, you stay on. I'm going to let, uh, coach Alyssa go, but I do appreciate it again. Thank you. Thanks guys. All right. We'll see you. Right. So how cool is that? Right. So, I mean, there's an opportunity for you, right. So to learn from a, a an amazing young lady that, um, you know, again, I've known her, I met Alyssa when she was 11 years old, right. She was in the same uh, place as a lot of you guys, right. Uh, focused, but worried, right. Centered, but scared, right. Uh, having all of these competitive thoughts, but worried that you won't show up at the time. Right. Um, but here she is, right? And and she's shown that you can be strong through adversity. And she's shown that, you know, you're allowed to make a decision and, and change your decision and you can still be successful. Does that make sense? Right? And, and she also pointed out that you can be as good as you want to be. So, you know, if you're not giving everything to this game, because I'm going to tell you, she did, right? And look at the level that she made it. Right. So if you're not giving everything to this game and everything to yourself, like, why are you here? What are you doing? Right. If you're not working hard every single day on yourself, your athletics, your academics, your inner self, your outer self, being a good teammate, being a good uh, you know, daughter, being a good student, pulling all of that together and knowing like we're going to have some tough times. Right. I mean, think about it. Peyton, last couple of tournaments, Castillo had a, had a slump, had a, had some tough times mentally. She was kind of worn down and beat up. Right. Riley has had some moments where like, hey, I want to get back in the game. I'm stuck with this goofy injury. Right. Addy has been, you know, really deciding, am I in the game? Am I out of the game? There's been, you know, Neve, you've been switching, you know, switch teams and had to meet a whole new crowd right at the beginning of the season and put your trust that they're going to help develop you and get you where you need to be. So, you know, LB, I don't know if you slept for more than four hours in the last month. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody kind of has their thing that is pulling them in a good direction, in a downward direction. And we are given the tools to be able to say, OK, when I feel myself sliding, when I feel myself going down, when I feel like I'm not performing the way that I need to, boom, here it comes. Now I got to stop that talk intentional effort to say, I can, I will, I must, I'm gonna, I'm slowing it down, trust in the process, in the zone. Does that make sense? Right? Every single day for what you're doing. All right, Peyton, Castillo, any questions? Clark? Addy? Swiley? Nevea? I do once everybody leaves. <laughs> okay, no problem. For the after session. All right. Uh, Olivia. All right. Kate. LB. She's sleep. <laughs> She's listening to the phone and went to sleep. That's funny. No. -uh. I'm just messing with you. I know you ain't sleep. That's funny. Any questions? You good to go? I'm good. All right. Uh, Andrea, Joey, iPhone 7 or Emma, anything that you want to add or questions as our guests? 
Uh, Bill, I just want to say thank you for having me on. And uh, it was nice to meet some of these young ladies and see some ladies that I, I know very well. Yeah. And uh, I love what you're doing here, man. And keep keep doing your thing. No, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for, you know, I mean, this is open group. We invite anybody to these. We just talk softball and what the kids are working through. We bring in a guest every once in a while. And, you know, there we go. So, well, cool, man. I appreciate everybody joining. I appreciate everybody uh, coming on. Keep working hard, right? You guys all have a couple big weeks coming up. Uh, my schedule is out there. If you need a one-on-one, -on -one, I think Addy and Peyton have scheduled uh, a one-on-one. -on -one. It's just quick little half hour, fifth, not you, the other Peyton, 15, 20 minute session, half hour, you know, just to tighten up before you go to the tournament. So if you need that, great. If you don't, uh, individuals are next week. I'll have the calendar out on, you know, Saturday or Sunday. Um, we'll get it working. Appreciate y'all coming out. Bye.